All right, in the last video, we were working on our, our uh, muslin mock-up. We did some fixes to the side seams as well as the crotch seam, as well as the height of the pants. And then we did our adjustments to the patterns. Now at this stage, we're ready to do the front Western style pocket, back patch pocket, and then of course having our waistband. So let's go ahead and get started on that now. All right, so in the last video, what we did was we finished up our back main body piece as well as having our back yoke panel and then having an option for a contour waistband above that. In a future video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make the patch pocket for the back. But for now, what we need to do is we need to continue working on our front panel. Now taking a look here at the front panel, we have the waistband from the back coming along all the way to center front. So we already determined the waistband here at the front of our pants. Eventually what we're going to do is we're going to cut this waistband away and we're going to develop a western style front hip pocket. Now for some of us, these two darts, we can completely ignore them. But for other sizes, we want to keep some of this information as we develop our western style pocket. Let's go ahead and start talking about that now. Okay, so take out your front pattern piece and let's turn this so the waist is up high and the knees are down towards you. Before we start to develop the western style hip pocket right here, we need to do something with these two darts depending on the size of your model. Now for some of you, you are doing menswear. So what you're going to do is the top of your pants was basically the top of your underwear. And then you're going to cut away however wide your waistband was. That's the top of your pants and you're done. All of these darts right here, you'll either have a single dart or two small darts. They just disappear completely. The same thing is going to happen for children's wear or if you're doing teens and tweens. Basically, you're just cutting away the waistband and you're done. For those of you, you'll be ready to go ahead and move right on to doing the Western style hip pocket. Now there's two more variations on what to do with these darts. The second variation is going to fit within the women's sizes, basically 6 all the way through 10. And when you do that, you'll be following exactly what I'm going to do. Now for those of you who are doing plus sizes, or for those of you who have a really curvy body, so for instance, you might have wide hips and a tiny waist. In that instance, you're going to want to keep one of these darts here on the main body to help with cupping these up into your smaller waist. This is also included if someone kind of has a pooch belly and you still need to have some dart cupping and shaping to hold these jeans up nice and uh, snug here on the front. So for those of you, what we're going to do is we're going to take one of these darts and bring it down here onto the main body. Now when you cut and sew your custom pair of jeans, you will have a short little dart right here at the front. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to do now for those three different scenarios. Alright, so for men's, boys, teens and tweens, women's, and even petite sizes, like for instance, petite size 0 through 4 or 6. What you'll do is go ahead and just cut right along the bottom of your waistband, and you'll be ready to move on to the hip style pocket. Once you've separated the waistband from the main body, be sure to write on here FTWB for front waistband. And don't lose this pattern piece because we need the information from these darts when we start to develop our front western style pocket. For women's plus sizes, what we need to do is this dart here, we need to keep this and have it down here on the main body before we cut off the waistband. And take out your ruler and let's do this right now. All right, so for the plus size women or for curvy girls, what you want to do is come over here to center front and come over to the dart that matches your center grain line. 
Now come down here to where you're going to cut at the bottom of your waistband. And what we want to do is we want to measure down an inch and a half and we're going to put a dart tip right there. Now this dart tip, we're going to connect it all the way back up to the original dart legs here at the top of the pants. And just so you don't get confused on the lines, let's go ahead and start to erase some of this old dart right now. But make sure you can still see where your original dart legs were going. Now we can connect from this dart leg to the new dart tip and back out to the other dart leg. If you'll notice, up here the dart is wider than it is down here at the waist. And that's correct. By the time we get down here into this area, we want a really small, basic, short dart. And it's just going to give you a little bit of cupping over your tummy. For those of you who are plus sizes, you're going to notice your dart is actually larger than mine is. Now, if it seems really wide here, if you're still getting somewhere around a three-quarter inch of a dart, and you try to come down to this little one and a half inch distance, you're going to have a funny looking dart. So if yours is around three quarters of an inch here, then make sure to go ahead and do a two inch dart to make that a little less noticeable when you sew it up. For me, this dart is only a quarter of an inch, so it's a little tiny dart. Realistically, on my size six women's, I don't need this fitting at all, but I'm just showing you how to do it for the plus sizes. If your dart is any larger than three quarters of an inch, then go ahead and right now turn it into a three quarter inch dart and make it come down two inches. That's about as large of a dart as you're going to want. Now keep in mind, there was still a second dart on your pants. This information here, we're going to use that when we're making our western style pocket and you're going to have a second dart that's hiding on your denim jeans. That's what I'm going to be doing for my size 6 women's. So after you have your dart here, then continue on with me to designing the western style pocket. Now after you separated the waistband from the main body, let's go put on here, um, let's go ahead and put on here FT for front, WB for waistband. And then on mine, I want to remember that this is the plus size, so I'm going to write plus on here. Down here on the main body, I just want to remember my dart, so I darken it in a little bit and circle the dart tip. So I'm going to take my waistband and set it off to the side. Now for the front main body, what I want to do is I'm going to turn my paper here so the side seam is closer to me and we're going to work on this pocket. Also what I'm going to do is I'm going to just fold my paper in half so it's easier for me to move this around as I'm doing the shaping for my pocket here. So go ahead and position your paper the same way as I have mine. Okay, so take out your favorite fitting pair of jeans. What we're going to do is we're going to take that same pocket shaping and duplicate that here onto your pattern draft. Now, just so we have a sense of what's going on, this is the front waistband that we just cut away. And that would be the same as this right here. So this top edge of your pants is the same as the top edge right here. So we have the side seam, full hip level, crotch depth, and this is the top of the main body. Now inside of here is going to be our western style hip pocket opening. The pocket does not come all the way out to the grain line. So it's going to be somewhere coming up short of the grain line. 
So make sure you don't make it go too far into the pants or it's going to look funny because it's going to be too close to center front. Also you'll notice here they have the belt loop right on the grain line and you're going to want to do the same thing yourself to hold your pants up right there at that grain line area. For determining the width of your pocket here at the top opening, there's a few different ways to go about it. Number one, you can just measure straight off of your store-bought pants, transfer that here, and put your marking on your draft. Number two, if you're doing a totally custom draft, basically you want to make sure your hand can fit inside the pocket. So in that case, I would have my hand here and I would find a location where I know my hand can fit inside and I would put my marks on my draft. Now in my instance I had done a basic mock-up based on my first draft patterns and while I was doing a fitting with my fit model I went ahead and I went and I marked on here what I thought looked really good on my particular model at the time she was wearing her pants. So again I could come in here and I can measure from the side seam out to the pocket opening and I can get that mark now on my pants. The next measurement that we all need is from the top of your main body, which is also the bottom of your waistband, we want to measure along the side seam down. So this would be the depth of the opening. So for instance, mine is two inches. If I look at my store-bought pants here, it's coming down again, same thing, two inches. So over here on my draft, I'm gonna start at the top of the pants, measure down two inches, and this will be the bottom of the opening for my pocket. Now let's take a closer look on how to do the shaping for this top of the pocket. So come along here, this is the side seam at the top of the main body and we're going to come down to the depth of our opening. What I'm going to do is I'm going to square this with my matrix dots so it's parallel to the full hip and parallel to the crotch depth. Now let's move along the top of the pants here to the width of your pocket. This one I want to square it down with the curve of this top of the pants. So make sure for the first half of an inch your ruler is square with the top of the pants as you draw this line down. And if you'll notice it's a little bit of an angle pointing this way and that's correct. Especially as you move into the larger sizes it'll be pointing even more in that direction. Now starting from this corner what we're going to do is we're going to measure back two inches going towards the side seam. And we can bring in our French curve and what we want to hit is somewhere up in this area as well as down at that two inch mark. So if you need to just keep moving the French curve until you can find that location. And then go ahead and erase this old corner because we don't need that information anymore. Now just take a minute to make sure that you like the size of the pocket and the shaping of the pocket. Now that you like your pocket bag, let's go ahead and color this in red. Let's also take a minute here to label these. So going below the red, we're going to write main body. And above that, we're going to write facing in blue. Now at this stage, we're going to separate the facing piece from the main body. And you do not have to worry about having any kind of notches on here. This facing piece we're going to use later. Make sure you do not lose track of it. For now, we need to start developing the pocket bag depth.
take out your jeans and turn them inside out so you can see the pocket bag liner. Now what we're going to do is, if you notice on these jeans, the pocket bag goes from the side seam and you'll notice it's going all the way here into the zipper. Now this is really difficult to do and it's difficult to understand at first and you can make a lot of mistakes on this and end up having more problems. What we're going to do is we're going to do a pocket bag that ends before it gets to the zipper and it'll just free float inside of your pants. The thing that we want to see here is what is the pocket bag depth? So that would be how far does your hand go into the pocket? Now you'll notice on your jeans the pocket bag depth is really short. The reason they do that is because your jeans gets kind of tight along your thighs, if you have a pocket bag sticking down further, it shows when you're walking around in your jeans and it kind of looks bad. You could see the bottom edge like poking through in the thigh area. So a lot of denim jeans, the pockets are really short. We're going to do the same thing on ours. Now if you're doing menswear, you can always put your hand and try to determine about how much room do you need for your fingertips. For me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the same depth that we have here on the store-bought jeans. So I'm measuring from the top of the main body down to the bottom of the pocket bag liner and I'm getting six inches. Now I can come over here and remember this is the top of the um, pocket opening so we need to bring our facing put it back into place so now we can measure from the top of the main body coming down the six inches for my pocket bag depth. Now I can lightly draw a line for the bottom of the pocket bag and I'm just making this parallel with the crotch level. Now the next thing I want to determine is how far to make the pocket bag go towards center front. Again, if I'm taking a look here at my Starbot jeans and I can see there's a bar tack here and that's from the belt loop on the front and this belt loop is right on the grain line which would be the same as right here and the pocket bag itself the opening where my hand can go inside of here is going a little bit beyond that center grain now I want to do the same thing in here I want to have my pocket bag so I can put something inside of my pocket and it's getting close to center front but not too close because I don't want it to cause issues when I'm sewing my zipper so just for me basically I'm gonna go from the grain line another inch and three-eighths now I can get a sense of the pocket bag liner so when I put my hand into my pocket I can see about how deep my hand will go inside of here then I can come in here and I can round off the corner and then I'll erase any extra information take a minute here to just go ahead and darken in any of your guidelines that might have gotten erased when we adjusted the side seam and then I can just check one more time about how this is going to look and feel for my hand Obviously, my hand is a little bit too big for this small size 6. But make sure you like what that pocket depth is going to be. If you want, you could extend it down a little bit more. You could extend it out a little bit more. But just know that the bigger it gets, the more it's going to stick out when you're wearing your jeans. And then I can come back and I can just compare this to my Starbot jeans to make sure I'm getting about the same result. In this instance, my pocket is a little bit deeper than what I have here, and I like it. So I think everything is good to go on my pocket. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark this pocket bag in blue. Okay, do this with me now. We need to look at 
how the pocket bag is constructed. So I want you to look at your jeans while I'm showing you this on my jeans. Now if you'll notice right away, there's two layers of the pocket bag liner. The first layer is going from the top of the main pant all the way down to the bottom of the pocket bag. The other layer is going from the bottom of the bag, but it comes here and it stops at the opening for the pocket. So again, where my finger is right here is the same as this liner right here. So we have this liner that's touching the opening and the other liner that's touching all the way back up to the top of the pants. Now what we need to do is we need to make two different pattern pieces for the two different liner bags. We also need to give them different names. Now the first liner bag is going to go from the top of the pocket all the way down to the bag. And this is going to be called the top bag. The second one is going to include the distance all the way back up to the waist. So it's going to be this shape here and this is going to be called the under bag. In order to make these pattern pieces we need some more paper. So let's go ahead and prepare a couple pieces of paper that are larger than your pocket. So here I have a piece of paper so I can get ready to trace off one of my pocket bags. The first pocket bag that we're going to do, we're going to do the under pocket bag, which includes all the way up here to the waist and down. I want to make sure that my facing piece is perfectly aligned again here with my pattern. So I have the same exact shaping for the side seam as well as the waist that I had before I cut this off. Now I'm going to arrange this to where I can see the top of the waist, the bottom of the bag, and the side seam. Plus I have lots of seam allowance all the way around. Next thing I want to do is I want to find the grain. So here's the grain from the main body. And I'm going to take the grain and I'm going to line it up with some of my matrix dots. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tape my pattern piece down so it will not move. And let's start by putting in this grain line. Take out your very form curve and go ahead and follow along and do the same pieces with me. So we're going to start here with the side seam. Now remember you want to have the exact same side seam shaping as before. Now let's come over here and get the top of the main body. Now the next thing we want to do is this pattern piece that we're making right now is the under bag. So it's going from the top of the main body all the way down to the bottom of the bag. This is the line that we drew in blue. So we're going to trace off the blue. Now using your blue color pencil, let's go ahead and label this under bag. And let's also put on the arrowheads for the grain line. Now leave the side seam alone, but what we're going to do is over here at the grain line, we're going to just erase some of this extra information that's outside of the pattern piece. But leave this extra side seam here sticking out because we're going to reference that later. Now before I remove this pattern piece, I just want to make sure that it matches perfectly with the side seam and here at the top of the pants. Now that we finished the shaping for the under bag liner, let's go ahead and move this off to the side. All right, so take out your jeans and lay them down flat like I have mine. And what I want you to do is hold the side seam down and kind of push here at center front to get this totally flat on the table. And what you'll notice is 
there's still some volume sticking up for the, your pocket. So again, I'm holding the side seam here, I'm holding center front there, so this is all flat on the table, but this area right here is sticking up. We need to do that to our pattern piece. Basically what's happening is the front side seam is a little bit longer than the back. So then they have to push the side seam back and that makes this form this extra added volume right there. So what we need to do is we need to add to the front main side seam before we do the top bag liner. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up our curve and we're going to move the curve slightly outwards so we can add a little bit more volume to the main body pocket. It's really important though that we have the exact same curve as from before. So what I'm going to do is I'm leaving my facing taped in place and I'm also going to come back to my original waist. So I'm lining it up here with center front as well as the side seam and I just want to tape that in place so it does not move. Now I can bring my curve in here and I'm making sure I'm lining it all the way back up to my original mark here at the top of the waistband. So now I can see my curve coming all the way back down into here. Now take the time to notice down in this area where your curve transitions and starts to aim for the ankle. Now wherever that location is, I want you to put a mark going about an inch above that. So find where it's blending back into your ruler and come up one more inch. Now on here I'm also noticing it's the number 21. Now this is going to be different for you but on mine it just happens to be 21. Now what we can do is let's take away this waist as well as take away the facing. Now follow me here. We're going along the side seam up to the top of the pocket opening. What we're going to do is we're going to extend this mark out further to give our pocket opening a little more room. Now we're going to do a different measurement according to the jeans you're making for your client. For menswear, what you're going to do is you're going to add another 3 eighths of an inch going out beyond the side seam. For all other sizes, we're going to add one quarter of an inch extra. Now watch me first. What I'm going to do is Remember down here, I was figuring out where my curve blended and I put a mark and for me it happened to line up right here on the number 21. I can set this side seam back up to its original location and I'll put my pencil eraser here and I can pivot my curve to come out and it's going to meet at my new mark right here. Then of course what I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this back in to this line somewhere well above the knee location. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and lightly erase my old side seam but I want to keep the location here at the top and I'm also keeping the location here down at the bottom. Again so I'm going to line up my ruler with that measurement and I'm going to put my eraser on it so I can pivot and I'm going to add to the side seam here for my hip pocket. Now for almost all of us, it should just blend really smooth right back into here. Some of you might have a different shaping down in your knee area. And if you need to, you can always turn your uh, very form curve around to help clean up the blend going back towards the ankle and erase any extra lines. Now in this instance, our front pant side seam is larger than the under bag 
pattern piece. And what's going to happen is, is when we sew them together, we have to push this up to hit the same location here, and that's going to give you your volume for your hand to go inside of your pocket. All right, so do this with me now. Take your under bag pattern piece, and we're going to put it here underneath. And I just want to tape it down to the tabletop so it doesn't move around. Now, taking a look here at the top of the bag in this front corner, and here's the grain line, I'm going to match that up with the blue right here and the grain line in the top of the bag from my main body. And I'm going to tape that here to this pattern piece. So I've taped it here at the grain line and here at the top of the pocket. And now, where the top of the pocket is touching, right here on your under bag, what we can do is we can slide this side seam over to be at the same location. And if I tape this down here outside of the pattern piece, now you can see this is going to be your built-in volume for putting your hand inside that pocket. The most important thing to remember is the change that we did on the front side seam, we only do it to the front and we only do it to the main body. And that change, we did not do it to the under bag. And we also did not make any change to the facing. Now we're ready to make our top bag liner pattern piece, and it's going to include this new side seam. So take out a new clean piece of paper, and let's get ready to make that pattern piece now. Now position your paper to where you'll have enough room for seam allowance all the way around your pocket bag liner. And then look for where we have the center grain line. And let's go ahead and line up that grain line with some of your matrix dots. Then we come in here and we get the bottom for the pocket bag liner and the front edge. And then we'll use our French curve to round off this front corner and then erase any extra lines. And I'm going to continue using my tools here to get the top edge as well as the pocket opening straight edge and the pocket opening curve. And for tracing off this little bit of side seam here, I want to use my tool and make sure I come all the way back to that mark that I used from earlier. And then before I take this pattern piece off, I just want to double check that I have the top correct, all of this curve in blue, and the side seams, and this top edge right here. Now, what we're looking at here is actually the wrong side of this pattern piece. It's easier for us to trace it off from the front of the pants, but realistically, this is going to be the face up for the liner. So turn yours over, and on the back here, let's write top bag. And let's also go ahead and darken in the grain line and just a little bit of the pattern piece. You don't have to do the whole thing. And just trace off a little bit of the pattern piece here at the grain line, just to remind yourself. Okay, let's flip this over and look at it again compared to the front of our pants. 
and take out your red color pencil. And what we're going to do is we want to remember that this edge here sews to the top edge of your pants. Now if you recall, we've already drawn this in red along the pocket opening. Let's do the same thing here on the top bag liner. Now remember we changed the side seam here on the main body. Let's go ahead and get that in red just for the distance of the pocket. So come back here to your original mark and let's get this in red right here for the pocket. And that's the side seam of the main body in red. And then let's do the same thing here on your top bag liner. So double check yours with me now. There's red here on the top opening and there's red along the side seam. And the same thing here for the main body. Okay, now that we have the top edge and the side seams in red, notice how we have blue here for the bottom and the far edge of the pocket bag liner. What I want to do is on my top bag, I want to put that in blue also. Now on the top bag liner, this blue edge here is eventually going to sew to the same edge of the under bag. But you'll notice when you put these together, starting down here at the bottom corner, that the edges don't match up underneath. The reason is, is because remember we extended out the main body of the pant as well as it's extended here for the top bag, but we did not extend that on the under bag. Now what you don't want to do is you do not want to add to the side seam of the under bag or else we're going to lose our fitting for adding that volume to the top of the pocket. Eventually though, this blue line here needs to be the same distance as this line right here. And we're going to fix that a little bit later, so don't worry about it right now on the under bag. Okay, let's take the top bag liner as well as the main body and move these out of the way. Bring in your under bag piece, that original facing piece, and we also need a new piece of paper that will be large enough to make this facing piece into a pattern also with seam allowance. Some of you might not know what facing means. So if you take a look here at your pants, the denim fabric is the main body fabric. You can see it here on the waistband, right here on the main body. And also you see denim right here going inside the pocket. This piece here is called the facing. If you look down inside the pocket, the facing actually stops. It goes for a certain distance and it stops. And then the pocket bag liner continues on. The reason we do this is you want to have a facing that's facing out towards the people seeing you wearing your pants. But as you go down into the pocket, you don't need to keep having all of this thick denim fabric all the way down in your pocket. Also, if you did denim all the way to the bottom here, you would see a little ridge when you're wearing your jeans where it's sticking up because it's so thick. And that's why they have where it's just liner as you go down towards the bottom of your jeans. All right, so what we're going to do is taking your facing piece, we need to match the side seam with the side seam of the under bag and move this all the way up to the top of the pant. And we want to tape this so it's not going to move. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's take a closer look at the facing pattern piece. I'm going to tape my under bag to the tabletop so it doesn't move. Now this facing piece right here does not have a grain line on it yet and we need to get one in there. So just somewhere in the middle of the pattern piece, let's go ahead and find your nearest row of matrix dots and we can line it up here with all the matrix dots on both pattern pieces and we can get a grain line just for the facing piece. Now we can bring in a blank piece of paper and remember we want enough room all the way around to add seam allowance to the facing. But I'm also going to make it larger down below so I'm going to move this so the facing piece is up here a little bit further. And I'm lining it up with a grain, same as some matrix dots, and then I'll tape this so it does not move. Now watch me first. What I want to do is I want to get the top edge of this facing piece. And I'm making sure I'm using the same curve all the way from the pattern piece underneath. And make sure to extend it a, a good inch beyond the bottom of the facing here. Now let's also get the side seam and make sure you're getting the same side seam from the under bag. Also make sure you're going an inch below the bottom of this facing. Now for this pocket facing, you can see that it goes behind the pocket opening and then eventually it stops. What we can do is we can come in with our ruler and find out where is that pocket facing stopping, get our pants to relax, and then we're measuring all the way back up here to the top of the main body and below the waistband. So for instance, I'm seeing the measurement three and a half. Now on this side of the pocket, you'll also see there's a little tiny coin pocket. This is something that you can do on your own time later. I'm not going to show you how to do it. It's the exact same process as doing the back patch pocket, which, which I will show you later. But so when we measure inside the pants down to the bottom of this facing piece and back up here to the bottom of the waistband or the top of the main body of your pants, the measurement I'm getting is three and a half. So I want to take that measurement now and do that to the facing on my pattern piece. So now I can bring that measurement three and a half from the top of the main body coming down into the pocket area. And this lets me know that my facing bottom edge should come all the way down to here. Now when I come back in here, this is the original facing bottom edge that we have with it's got some red on there. I'm going to just lightly put it in on my pattern piece here. And then I can see that this is the distance going inside the pocket. For me, I feel like it doesn't quite have to go all the way down to there. I'm going to back it up to about here. And then I'm noticing here's the grain line on the front on my pants. I'll go ahead and have it just come up and end right at that grain line, but I know that this is hidden inside behind that pocket opening. So I'm going to use my tools and darken in this design right here. Now before I finalize this, I want to double check my work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top bag and I want the side seam and the bottom of the bag so where blue and red are meeting at this corner. And here at the under bag, same thing, it's the side seam and the bottom of the bag. Those two corners, I want to put them together. And then 
when I'm looking through this pattern piece, I want to make sure that the facing is here, going lower than and deeper than the top of my pocket. So now I know when you're looking at my pants, you're going to see the denim facing right here, and it will go below the pocket opening. So here's the pocket opening. Here's my denim facing, and the facing is going down below the pocket opening. And you can see the same thing. Here's the pocket opening. The denim facing is going to go down below this opening. Now that we double checked our pocket facing, let's go ahead and erase all the extra lines on the outside of the pattern piece. And we'll put our arrowheads on the grain line. And in blue, let's label this front pocket facing. Now that we made a pattern piece for our front pocket facing, this smaller piece here, I don't want to lose track of this, and I wouldn't have to put the size of my dress form on there and today's date. And then I want to keep that with my waistband. And don't lose track of these just in case you have questions later. Now when we stack these together, we have our under bag. This is the front pocket facing that'll go on top of the under bag. And then we have our top pocket bag. And finally we have the main body. All right, so let's take off this front pocket facing piece, set that off to the side. What we're going to do is we're going to make this side seam in blue. Now also for the front pocket facing, we have the same side seam. So make that one blue as well. Now the top edge of the front facing and the top edge of the under bag, they're going to also sew together. So let's make those blue. Now let's take another look here at, this is the top bag liner and the under bag liner. And I'm going to take this bottom corner from the side seam and the bottom of the bag and I'm going to match it up with the bottom corner here. And then I'm also matching up the side seams and here at the top edge. Now when I look underneath, I'm noticing that this side of the pocket bag here does not match with the side of the pocket bag here. And that is correct. If you recall, the two side seams from the blue and the red are different because we made the front extend out a little bit more to give us that built-in volume inside your pocket. Therefore, these edges out here will no longer match. At this stage, you do not want to fix it. Later on, when we cut everything out and we start doing a mock-up in muslin and we do a fitting back to our dress form or client, we're going to have an opportunity to extend this and make a little bit more of a dart shaping in the waist as needed. And you might find in menswear you don't need to do that at all and we're going to go ahead and make the two liners match. But in women's wear and especially when we move into plus sizes and someone who has more of a pooch belly, you're going to want to use this as your second dart shaping to add a little more cupping up above into the waist area. And then at that point, we'll come back and we'll fix the shaping of both pocket edges. So for now, don't worry that they don't match and leave this one lightly in pencil because we're going to change this later. Now here for the top bag liner piece, let's go ahead and write top bag and we'll put it in parentheses so we remember that this is the wrong side up. 
We can also add our grain arrows. And now it'll be easier to reference this pattern piece here from the front. Okay, let's take the top liner bag as well as the front pocket facing. We'll keep these together and let's move these off to the side.